All right, with a quick and deep explanation of what makes a class-based or stateful component so important, now we're gonna jump into how do we use state? Now that we understand what state is, right? It's the wallet that the component uses to store vital information that it is in charge of. Now, how do we go about using it? And I'm gonna show you just some really quick examples of how to use state in your component before we really dive into implementing this to do item create component and seeing some of the more complex features that we have for dealing with state. So let's do some quick examples of how we can use state. Now this is the first example. We set up a default state for our component inside of the constructor. And again, the constructor is the method that sets up our component to begin with. And it is inside of that constructor function that we set the initial state. By initial state, I mean when this component gets created and it gets rendered to the browser, whatever we set in here will be that, that initial set of data that this component will have to work with. And in this case, because it's a brand new to-do item, we're going to have an empty name and an empty description. And in a little bit, we're going to begin implementing that actual component but for right now, we're gonna go ahead and see how we might use state inside of our component so we understand that first before we really start implementing this component. To use state inside of our JSX, we can simply do something like this. Of course, we're gonna do it in our curly braces because that tells JSX that we are executing native JavaScript. And we can say this dot state dot name and this is how we access state is by using the this keyword calling state and then grabbing out of that state object the property that we want to see now if we refresh this we can see that everything built and then we can go to our browser and we can see our component has disappeared it really hasn't disappeared. It's still there. We can see it right here in our, HTML, in our HTML, but because it's an empty string, we have nothing. So let's say this is a new to-do. Save that, come back, and here we can see it printed out right there. So through the use of state in our JSX, we are able to pull the initial state of a particular attribute of that state object and we can use it in our JSX. Now the reason why I say initial state is because at this point in time when this particular component gets rendered this is the initial value of the name inside of the state object for this component and when we call this.state.name it refers back to the state object and pulls out the name attribute and prints out whatever its default value is. And in this case, it is, this is a new to-do. And we could change that text to whatever we want. This is the description of a new to-do. Save that. And then we can do the same thing down here. Inside of curly braces, we can say this dot state dot description. Save it, come back, and we should see it tacked on. If we wanted to separate them from each other, we can go ahead and add ourselves a div. Put that on the end. Another div. Cut that. Put it on the end. Come back. And now they're on separate lines because we're using divs as block elements. And we've got the name in the description. Oh, well, maybe we want to go ahead and set this as name. And then add description right here, save it. And here we go, name and description. All right, so this is how we use the state, the values within the state object inside of our JSX. Really simple. Another thing that we need to learn about is how we alter or update state. Now usually when we update state, it's in response to some kind of an event that happens inside of our component. In this case, we have ourselves a component right here for our create new to do. 
we've got our name and our description. And usually we're going to use input boxes, right? Input fields. And then we have a save button. So as we type in an input field, there's going to be events fired off every time we click a keystroke. Same with our description input. And then the save button would kick off an event <clears throat> when it gets clicked on. When any of those events happen, we would use the syntax to update our state like this. This dot set state. And then in here, we're going to pass an object that contains the attribute and the new value that we want to modify. So in this case, we're going to modify name. And we're going to pass it something new. This has been modified. Now, here we're setting state directly, and that can only be done when we are inside of the constructor. This is the only time that you are allowed to say this.setState and use the assignment operator and actually set the state. Once this has been done in the constructor, you are no longer allowed to do this. Now, you can do this, but it will mess up your component and you'll get strange side effects and you'll run into crazy bugs they're going to make your life a nightmare. So don't ever do this again once you get out of the constructor. Once you're out of the constructor and you're actually inside of your logic for your component, whether it be other methods or the render method, you need to use the set state. And the set state is a function provided by the React component object, which is really there to allow us to let the component know that we would like to change the state and that when it is ready, we would like the value that is contained inside of this object, we would like the property within state that has the same name to be modified and have its value changed to this. The reason why it's an object is because we want to be able to pass more than one of the properties that are in the state object to be updated. And the more complex your component gets, the more state properties you're going to have or attributes of the state object you will have that may need to be updated at any given time. Now when we call set state, this object goes into a queue and waits for the component to be ready to update the state. And at that point in time, it will merge this object with this object and update only the fields that we specified with the new values and any fields that we don't specify will retain their old values. The state object will then be updated with this new merged object that has the updates as well as the old stuff and it will set it to be the new state. And we let the component do that. We don't worry about doing that. So from after the constructor finishes executing from that point on, we always use this.setState and we pass an object that contains only the attributes we want to update with their new values and we leave it to the component to merge the current state with the new state, modify only those ones that need to be modified and keep the ones that didn't need to be modified and we let the component worry about that. Now, normally we're not going to do a set state just before we do a return on this. I just wanted to show you the syntax. And as we get more complex and we begin to implement both the editing of this input box and the editing of this input box, as well as the click event of this button, we're going to see this set state used inside of the event handlers that we will add that handle these events. For now, we don't have anything that's causing an event. So I'm just going to show you this this dot set state within the render just before the component gets rendered. Oops. Now we ran into problems because this dot set state inside of the render will cause the component to ask for an update and therefore we get into a continuous loop. Now what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, let's walk through this really quick. The set state function, because we are leaving it to the component to decide when to merge our update object with our current state object, and then have a new merged state and set that state, 
the cool thing about React is, is that once the component is done merging our states and coming up with a clean new state that contains the updated objects or the updated values, and then the non-updated values, well, it will automatically kick off a re-render of the component, which means when the set state is done being executed and the merging of the new state and the old state has completed, the this.setState function will actually call render. And when it calls render, it will come here hoping to re-render the component and you will be able to see the changes to state actually happen here inside of the user interface or inside of the HTML. Funny thing is, is that we did this.setState inside of the render, which means that this.setState is going to ask the component to go update the state by merging this with the current state, and then it's going to call render again. So it's going to call render. It's going to call set state. It's going to call render, set state, and we're going to get an infinite loop right here, and it will never actually get down to rendering the HTML. And with an infinite loop between these two, because render is calling set state, and set state is calling render, and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, we end up with an infinite loop, and our browser dies. Well, Chrome stops it from actually dying, because as soon as it recognizes that we have an infinite loop, it's going to go ahead and just kill the page. So that's what happened right there. So again, don't ever use this.setState inside of your render. So never use it inside of your render and never change your state directly. We will see how to use this.setState as soon as we begin to implement the input fields and the click button or the button click event.